one of the most interesting, can't even describe. Never mind, never mind. <laughs> These fighters found out just how many levels there are to the pursuit of martial arts excellence and how far behind you can fall if you're not up to the right standard. Let's get into it. Let's kick things off with something truly hilarious. Who knows what the hell happened to this guy in this fight? But after things looked pretty normal at first, something bizarre happened when this fighter basically just collapsed into the corner out of nowhere. There was no punch landed, seemingly no injury or delayed reaction. He just folded like a deck chair. And then when the fight did resume, it didn't last long. This guy clearly didn't want to be in there, or at least that's what we're guessing, because a few moments later, he fell over again, giving up while seeming like he injured himself. One of the weirdest fights you'll ever see. When this Kung Fu master decided to test his skills against a legit boxer, the outcome must have been a pretty illuminating lesson for him. In fact, if he wasn't totally hit with embarrassment, he may very well have signed up for a boxing gym shortly afterwards. Just look at how easily the boxer teed off on him. The Kung Fu just had absolutely no rhythm to its offense, no defensive capabilities, and whenever the boxer decided to try and land, he was met with very little resistance. This is the classic example of a dude getting fraud checked in a way that just isn't arguable at all. What happens when a fully trained UFC level fighter takes on someone who has no idea what they're doing on live TV? A bully beatdown used to give us that answer weekly. And when this total novice was locked into a cage with Michelle Watterson, we got to see what it looks like when someone who can't fight is put in a combat situation. And you don't need us to tell you that it didn't go well for her, not at all. Watterson was basically able to land at will here, eventually forcing the ref's intervention following what was a totally uncompetitive showdown. When you're coming up against someone who's trying to expose your fakery for the world to see, so much can happen in one quick exchange. And when Zhu Zhaodong landed a hook and a leg kick on this Tai Chi master, it was enough of a statement for his target to understand that he was totally out of his depth. Most of the time, we like to cover brutal KOs on this channel, but in this case, there was a far quicker and more definitive judgment handed out. This dude's entire devotion to his martial art was undone in two quick strikes. A bitter pill to swallow, don't you think? Size can be very important in a fight, but you also gotta have some skills to back that bulk up with. And in this case, this big guy thought he would muscle his way into a position of superiority by challenging one of the smaller fighters in this gym. But all that ended up doing was to prove that he was just not any good at boxing. And once his opponent got his timing down, he proceeded to beat him up, gas him out, and nearly knock him out of the ring. And that is how you break the confidence of an over-eager big guy. He'll think twice before acting like an oversized bully again. If two guys aren't great at fighting, but one of them truly, truly sucks, you end up getting a matchup like this. All defense went out the window, and each of these men seemed to have absolutely no idea how to throw a straight punch. But in the end, it was the slightly more skilled guy who had his opponent totally broken within the opening exchange. This was a pretty terrible performance all round. But man, you gotta think that both of these dudes could use some real boxing lessons. Even that might not be enough to get them through the very noticeable problems with their game. The problem with these older martial arts styles being put to the test against legit MMA opposition is that their grasp of fundamentals just seem to fall apart completely when they're tasked with overcoming even the most basic of threats. And in this case, even though the Tai Chi guy was bouncing around and looking half decent for the first two or three seconds, as soon as the MMA fighter pounced, it was game over. A straight punch down the middle was the first punch he threw and yet the Tai Chi guy had absolutely no idea what to do. And as soon as it connected, the fight was over. Aikido, when used to a very high level, is actually an excellent way to obstruct any sort of momentum that your opponent is trying to build. And when this MMA fighter challenged a very high level Aikido guy to spar, you can see just how well this martial art can be used when you have a very experienced practitioner using it. And one thing to note here is that the Aikido guy did all this with just one arm. 
His ability to parry and to force his opponent exactly where he wanted him was just on a different level. He was able to manhandle his target from start to finish here, making easy work of him using his Aikido training. When Wing Chun and MMA collide, it only usually goes one way. And in this case, the mixed martial artist was actually called out by the Wing Chun guy and challenged to a fight under his own rule set. But if you're looking for some form of drawn out back and forth contest between these two fighting systems, that's not what this was, not at all. No, the Wing Chun guy looked out of place immediately in this one, and he ended up leaving his chin right there for the taking. And once the MMA guy realized that he could end this bout in the opening exchange, you'd better believe he did exactly that. A brutally quick and violent end to any hopes of an upset for this Wing Chun guy. Don't know if any of you guys train, but there can be a point in a heated spar when you and your partner understand that things just got a little more real. And in that moment, the intensity goes through the roof. When it came to this infamous Uriah Hall spar, his opponent decided to push him a little too much when he very nearly hurt him with a sneaky high kick that clipped the UFC veteran as he was exiting the pocket. And you could just see the change in Hall's demeanor there. He started to get quite serious all of a sudden. And from that moment on, he was hunting for the kill. And when he found the perfect opportunity to throw a deft spinning back kick to the body, he caught his opponent flush with it, dropping him to the canvas. There was no bad blood here, but if you come at a striker like Uriah Hall with that kind of energy, you better be prepared to deal with the consequences. In this one, we see a Jeet Kune Do guy in a robe taking on a self-described Kung Fu master who's about to figure out just how far he has to go in his martial arts journey. There's definite difference in speed here for sure, but the Jeet Kune Do guy certainly has the superior balance too. And when he lands a swift head kick upstairs, this bout was practically over. A real show of force from this talented fighter as he swept off the challenge of a much lesser foe. Chris Cyborg hits with a level of power that's unusual by women's MMA standards. There's a reason that the vast majority of fighters who step into the cage with her end up finished. And when this guy decided to see how he would fare with a multiple time women's featherweight champion trying to take his head off, well, the results were about as bad as you might expect. Cyborg beat the brakes off him with total ease, eventually scoring the finish with an easy spinning back kick to the body. The scary thing, she was barely trying. Next up, we've got an example of how not to throw an unorthodox kick, especially at the beginning of the fight. This bald guy looked pretty confident at first, moving into range with a real swagger to the way he got into range. Then out of nowhere, he decided his best move would be to attempt maybe the stupidest looking kick we've ever laid eyes on. Seriously, we can't even figure out how this was supposed to work. Terrible idea, awful execution, and this guy suffered a pretty well-deserved loss because of it. It doesn't get any worse than this one, folks. Sometimes in life, you have to own up to the fact that you made a crucial mistake. And in the case of this big dude, he and a bunch of his friends jumped a member of this gym. And as they outnumbered him, they did some damage. But when the gym owner challenged this crew to show up and deal with the consequences, only this guy did which you gotta respect. But that didn't make the beating he took any less brutal. In fact, you could tell that all three of the guys who stepped in there with him were enjoying every second of it. By the end, he could barely hold his hands up. This is how you serve up some much needed justice. The good old fashioned way. Safe to say this dude learned his lesson for sure. And finally, we come to one of the best examples of why it's important to always respect the power and capabilities of your sparring partner. Because even though the former interim UFC welterweight champion, Carlos Condit, visited the US military base with a friendly tone, once he told his sparring opponent to basically hit him as hard as he wanted to get hit, you just knew that there was a chance that this could go very wrong. And sure enough, when this guy made the mistake of going full force with Condit, he received a knockout punch in response. A nasty but necessary lesson handed out by a man who firmly deserves the nickname, the natural born killer.